Hi guys, we're at, oh, there's Alice. Hi Alice. Can you hear me yet? Hi, we're trying something new today. We'll see if it works. I hope to be able to actually have you guys be able to see me, but we'll, we'll see. I don't know if it'll be behind the the actual or not, but yeah, hi Joy, hi Mary, hello Sandy, yay! Everybody got your craft mats out for our messy project. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. I think maybe I don't know if we can move it yeah let's move this over a little bit because I'm looking that direction and the cameras over here just slide the, the, the stand over just a little so I'm not looking a totally different way than the screen yay see we're get we're trying to go high-tech guys we have sound we have picture in picture we're feeling pretty clever <laughs> Well, hope the sound sticks out, you know. It, it, I'd rather have sound than picture in picture, but if I have to choose. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, yes. Thank you. That's much better. Now it actually looks like I'm looking at you, which is cool, because that's what I want to do. And this way I can read your comments and feel more natural talking to you than having the camera over my shoulder and talking to you straight on, which was kind of weird. <laughs> but you guys have come to expect nothing less than a little weird from me. <laughs> How's everybody on this beautiful Saturday? Is this beautiful there? It's pretty nice here. A little overcast, but not bad. No rain at the moment. In the middle of a rainstorm on the west coast of Florida. Okay. The East Coast must be getting hit hard. It's warm there, huh, Joy? Cool. It was warm here earlier in the week, but it was very weird weather because one minute it was warm and the next minute it was raining and then it was beautiful and sunshiny and the next minute it was raining. Bryce was back and forth throwing out his lawn furniture, <laughs> the pads on his lawn furniture. <laughs> Shall I, shan't I? <laughs> You have. It was Miss Margie texting me. So, yeah. Anyhow, it's been a interesting time. Well, let's get this show on the road then. We have hands. We have hands and a live screen. I think we're ready to go. Okay, here's our big old craft mat that's included in this week's kit. These are really cool. It's actually a Teflon baking mat, but they make great craft mats. So this thing is heat resistant, so you can use your glue gun on top of it. You can do projects like this and it wipes down good. You can even do your painting and stuff you can put your paints right out on the mat or spritz water on the mat mix paint and stuff right on your mat wipe everything up when you're done so this is going to be a really fun tool to have so i hope you guys enjoy that okay let's take a look at what's in our kit i like it too alice i feel like i can actually talk to you like now like now you're here and i can talk to you hi nailers welcome Let's pull everything out. If I can see the big sore of my finger shows, sorry. 
I broke a figurine and I went to pick it up and it got me. <laughs> okay. All right, let's see what we got in our kit. You should have this big old, that's about, I think it's somewhere in the area of 11 by 10 by 11 maybe sheet. We can set aside our card stock. We can set aside our card blanks for now. I use those when we're done with our messy part. Should have a piece of mirror board, some envelopes. You should have a few toppers in your kit. I happen to have. I happen to have these, but you guys might have different ones that are flower. You should have either a red one or a little one. You should have a bow and you should have another bow and you should have a just for you sticker, some little pretty jewels and another just for you. You should have three pots of glitter. And you should have this doily. Now people have looked at me and they said, what are we doing with that doily? Hi, Thelma. Welcome. Oh, good. I'm glad you can hear clearly today. We've been working on that. Hi, Betty. Hi, Laura. Yay. Everybody's tuning in. We were just taking a look at our kits and kind of stalling a little to give everybody a chance to get in. So if you guys are ready, um, I've had people look at my black and white sample that I showed you last week and they say you're putting that doily into the paper well sort of <laughs> we're actually going to use our doily as a stencil so let's go ahead and begin we're going to now um, I want you to try very hard to avoid putting your fingers in the adhesive at all when you peel these off hang on to them because we're going to use that to handle our mat. Hello, Miss Katie. Peel those off. And I left you on the mats when we, when Margie and I laid down the adhesive on these earlier in the week. We, or last week, I guess now. Wow, time flies. Um, we left you some handling area on both sides of the card. So touch it by that. And if you need to, when you're putting your stuff on, use your paper to touch it because this won't take your adhesive off. So what I want you to do is turn this whichever way you like, really, it doesn't matter. But I want you to take your doily and I want you to set your doily so that one side, guys, is going to be off of the adhesive, and that's fine. And the other side will be the side that we're taking the the card from our our big our biggest card. So you're going to take your doily and you're going to lay it over. And even here, I'm going to use my paper. Oops, see, I just touched my card a little bit. You're going to use this to push your doily in. Try not to touch your adhesive at all. If you do have to touch it to hold it down, it's best if we can use our papers to hold it down. I want you to push that doily right down nice and firmly into the adhesive. Okay, you with me guys? Okay, if you didn't get your kit yet, when Bryce went downstairs to look and grab one for me, he said we had about maybe 10 kits left for this class. So if you didn't get one, I really encourage you to. You get the free craft mat with it, and this really is a fun project. I've talked I like how messy it is I may have scared some of you with that knowledge but it really is a fun project okay once you've got your doily firmly into your adhesive we're going to get out those pretty glitter pots 
you have one vial of our ultra high quality super fine iridescent glitter and you have two pots of this this sapphire blue glitter I love this stuff it's so pretty I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna start some sprinkling and I am going to be very generous when I'm sprinkling this on I'm going to basically cover everything which is why you got two pots of it I'm gonna put it all out there guys everything goes on the mat including I want to get even these edges because we'll use some of that edge material so get a bunch of glitter on that mat completely empty those two vials on there and now the fun begins because now we are going to start finger painting in our glitter and you're just going to take your hand and start rubbing it start rubbing it around get both hands in there why not life's short when's the last time you did finger painting really come on let that inner child go and let's get creative <laughs> i love this part this is like the most fun you can have and still be legal <laughs> yeah. oh, bryce is over there just saying i can't believe i married this woman <laughs> yeah, it feels good, doesn't it? It does. Ooh, yeah. Let's get in there and really rub that blue in. We want blue everywhere. <laughs> and I can tell you, I'm going to have blue everywhere, really. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, really let it rip, guys. Get it right in there. Just burnish it up real good with your hand. Burnishing is just a fancy word for rubbing it down. <laughs> oh. People who create techniques love to give them fancy names. But, you know, things like aperture. You know, you got a hole in a card, you call it an aperture. Why can't we just call it a hole in a card? I don't know, because it sounds so much better if you call it an aperture. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> yeah, we got it going here. <laughs> Mary, you're living vicariously through us. Come on, come on. You better get yourself a pot of glitter and get going here. Now, Alice wants to know if that's why you wore a blue shirt. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, I won't be able to see. <laughs> well, you, you can call me Twinkles. <laughs> I've been called worse. <laughs> Twinkles would be really friendly compared to some of the things I've been called in my lifetime. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Now, I am going to take a little off my hands and I'm going to take this up and I'm going to tap it. Tap, 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 tap. And just tap off everything it wants to come off. See there? I got this big old mat and I've still got glitter all over because that's what I do. I should actually put out two mats because I'm going to pick my mat up and I'm going to use it to Put a lot of this glitter back in my vials. Oh. <laughs> yep, she's spilling all over. That's what I do, guys. You're still going to have lots of glitter left over. We needed lots of glitter to get the coverage that you needed, thus the two vials. But we're going to have one and a half left I'm here. I was asking if they can get the sticky paper from you. Yes, you can. Although I don't know. Um, we, um, 
when March and I made up our samples, I always believed that you could do this with any, with any um, double stick adhesive. I did find that when we were working that while you can do it, you want a pretty good double stick adhesive for this. And some of the brands that I had worked better than others. Um, what I ended up using on yours is score tape in, an, in a wide roll. Now I'll tell you that score tape is not necessary for a lot of the things that we do, but score tape did work better for this project. I have some by um, my next choice after score for this would be the um, Cut and I think it's, it's from Ultimate Crafts and I think it's called Cut and Bond and we have that and that was kind of medium success. We had low success with the, well I love their other projects, the UU brand. We did not get a good, a good when I say UU, -U, it's actually spelled J-E-J-E. -J -E. They're the ones that have the yellow grid line on the adhesive. That did not hold as well. The problem was not getting it to, not getting the glitter to stick to it, but to get the glitter to stay on it when we were rubbing. Because now that we have this down, we're going to do some more burnishing, guys. Now that we have actually, oh, did you guys see what I was cleaning with? You know the Swiffer dusters, the real, um, the ones that are like for the dust mop. These things work great as a glitter pickup tack mat. You know, I have tack rags in the store for glitter cleanup, and I'll sell them to you. <laughs> I have them, but this works better. This this little Swiffer. Did you see how much glitter I was able to pick up pretty quickly in that? In that and I can just kind of refluff it, and it'll pick up more and more. I'll finish the whole project today with one sheet of that. But anyway, back to this. Now that I have this, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to polish this some more. So one of the things we found with the with some of the double stick adhesive is that as we worked, the glitter was coming off. Now we may have been rubbing a little too hard, and that's possible. I didn't have a lot of challenge with mine, but Margie was having some challenge with hers. And she's a very good crafter, by the way. So I I you know, but with some of the other adhesives, too much of it rubbed off. So the score was number one, the cut and bond was number two, and I just used those rolls and put it on. Um, Did you put it on just plain cardstock or is it a special paper? No, it's not a special paper. This is just, um, this happens to be Hunky Dory um, out of the big pad from Hunky Dory. It's 350 GSM. And um, we just, you can just put it on a regular sheet of cardstock. It doesn't have to be even be, hello, Don. Um, it doesn't even have to be a heavy duty cardstock. I just give you a heavy duty cardstock because I have it and it's nice to give you good quality stuff. But, um, okay, I have rubbed it all over. I'm gonna shake it. And see, I got more glitter off. Remember when somebody asked me before, is this going to shed a lot of glitter on our cards? By the time we're done rubbing this, I'm going in for number two. The second time, I'm going to go through it. And I'm going to rub it again. I want to thoroughly burnish that down. I want to make sure all the glitter that's in the doily is, you know, that we're getting the glitter in all those little holes down nice and firmly. I'm rubbing the side panels down good, and I just want to make sure that every single piece of glitter that's on here is laying down. Really, when we're burnishing, what we're doing is we're enhancing the color of the glitter. I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but if you put down glitter and you just put it on, it's pretty and it's sparkly. But if you lay the glitter down over an adhesive, a double-sided adhesive, then you rub over it. What you're doing is laying down those glitter flakes and 
as you're laying them down and pushing them into the glitter, more of that surface, that shine shows. So if you burnish your glitter, you'll get twice as much sparkle from it. Okay, I think I've got a second, good second coat. I'm gonna shake it off again. Now this time, I didn't clear off my old time so that you could really see it, but this time I have very, very little coming off. Move some of this out of the way so that you can see that. This time, look, there's very little coming off. I'm gonna do one last run over it. Pushing my mat down, pushing the glitter, just kind of a light circular motion. You don't have to be Wonder Woman, you know, when you're doing this. <laughs> any, tapes on, uh, any tips on rolling the score tape onto the cardstock? Um, not too much, really. When you're putting the tape, I put them on there for you because I couldn't send everybody a $50 roll of tape. But um, there really aren't any tips other than if you don't have a roll that's this wide, and who among us does, then, <laughs> then um, you just need to make sure they're butting up right against each other. And even, they can even overlap a little bit and you wouldn't notice. You know, because the adhesive is so very thin under there that if, you, if you're doing this at home, you could put one down. Margie was actually lifting the edge of the tape and putting a second piece of tape kind of under the first. Katie's becoming a glitter yeti out there. <laughs> Good for you, Katie. Get your hands in there. Get, get messy. Let that inner child go. And... Uh, so just make sure they're butted up together really, really good. Okay, I've been through it three times. I think we are in pretty good shape here. I'm gonna clean up my work surface just a little bit again before I switch colors. I'm gonna take my little tack rag. I'm gonna move stuff around. Actually, maybe I actually maybe have enough to force them back in a Eh, I don't think that's enough to break down. I think I will pull my waste can over here and sweep the last of that. I'm going to clean up my waste just a little bit extra because the better I clean this up now, the less I'm going to corrupt the white glitter because I'm going to put the white glitter on in just a minute. And the more blue I have out of the way, the less of the, the less blue I'm going to have in my white. It's actually really pretty though when the colors mix, so it doesn't matter. But I like to kind of keep my colors separated as much as I can. Okay. All right, that's enough cleanup for now. Bring my mat back in. Here we go. All right, part two. Here's where the magic begins, guys. I'm gonna take this where it's loose on the top I'm going to start pulling that back. Pull that doily a little bit at a time. Don't touch the sticky surface under it now because we want our glitter, our white glitter, to stick there. Use the paper? Huh? Yeah, but I'm on the edge, so I'm okay. But I can use my paper, absolutely. You can either hold it from the side or you can get right in there with that paper under your hand. Good suggestion, Grace. And, okay, I have removed the doily. Keep this. You can wash it, you can use it again. You don't even really have to wash it, but you can. And um, it's just a cheap little doily, but you know it gets the job done because look how beautiful that is. Now I'm gonna take Oh, Mary, what a great idea. <laughs> Katie says she's pretty now. I bet you were pretty to begin with, Katie. <laughs> but extra pretty, because glitter helps everything, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. I love uh, Mary Robinson's suggestion. Everybody see that? She has a tip for mailing five by five cards. She takes her five by five. She puts them in a five by seven envelope. And then she doesn't get charged a premium for mailing a square card. Great idea. Super idea. Thanks for sharing. That's fun. 
Okay, you may not need all of your white. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. Get your hands in there, it's time to feel how soft that glitter is. Now, I like to not only rub that white glitter over the doily, I'm actually gonna wipe my white glitter clear out onto my blue because this white is so super fine, especially with this glitter. This white is so super fine and powdery that it will get in between the flakes of the blue and it will make it even more beautiful than it already is. It'll just add some of that blue-green kind of shine that the iridescent white has into the blue color. Most of it will come off, but a little bit will stay in there. Burnish that in really good. We're finger painting, guys. Just about the time you thought it was safe to go back in the water. Here we go again. Coat two. <laughs> oh, I do love doing this. Makes me want to go back and finger paint. I have lots of other paintings more grown up to do, but you know, I think that's one reason I love this project so much, because it reminds me of being a kid and finger painting. Rub that in real good, guys. Really burnish that white in. Now we're going to get some blue flecks in this. You can either pour this back into your vial of white, or you might be able to combine your two blues at this point as possible, because we use quite a bit of the blue. You might be able to combine your two blues and then create a, a vial of mixed. It just depends on whether or not you mind a few blue flakes in your white glitter. That white glitter is kind of hard to find, though, and a little bit spendier, so... If you want to do that, you can pour this off into something else for now. You have another little container. Sometimes I steal Bryce's little Tupperware, tiny Tupperware kinds of containers. For the <laughs> He's over here looking over the top of his glasses at me with that stern look, guys. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I do take a little Tupperware kind of container or something to put my us in. Okay, we did it. We're tapping off. And a little bit more blue came off in that. That's to be expected. I'm going to lay it down again. I'm going to burnish it again. I'll ask if you could put a link to the score tape in your next newsletter. Yeah, I need to get some more of the wider score tape. But I, and I will, I will um, link you to what I have today. I don't have the wide rolls in stock candidly, the, the four inch and 16 inch, or excuse me, the four inch and six inch score tape is a little spendy. If you're gonna do a lot of this and I recommend it. <laughs> it's really good for your mental state. Um, but if you're gonna do a lot of this, it's worth it to get a, a wide a wide um, roll, you know, get one of the rolls of tape. The six is great because you could two sheets of stick, six and you can cover a 12 inch cardstock. But we used a six and a four just for economy sake for this. And I can tell you that um, they, they just go so far. Now look at this, what we're creating. How beautiful is that, guys? I'm going in for my second my second run at the at burnishing down the white and I'm just rubbing it all in there I want those flakes every flake to lay down and if it's gonna fall off I want it to fall off now I don't want my cards to be flaking all over the place later Isn't this beautiful, guys? Do you love it? Did you think it was going to be this easy? So I will get that my answer. Come in, let me come back to that. I will get some four inch and six inch rolls of tape. I do believe I have some two and a half. Um, it's a little less expensive, and while you'd have to put down quite a few rows of it, the truth is it's a less spendy way of getting the same result. So, um, why is it 
you always get an itch when you have your hands this messy. I'm gonna pour mine right back in the vial. And I'm making snowy scenes. I don't mind if they have a little bit of a blue cast to them. For those of you who aren't working along, let me show you the vial so you can see how much blue we actually picked up. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that pretty well. I'm impressed with our technology today, Bryce. I want to give a shout out to Mr. Bryce and his efforts at technology. He came up with this green and screen thing. He went looking for answers on the internet and found them. So I have his iPhone <laughs> precariously balanced on a vase, I might say. <laughs> but we have his iPhone here. And we are... That's how we're getting the, the screen and screen shot. I really like that. I like this an awful lot. I think it just, it makes me feel so much more connected to you. So thank you very much, honey, for all your efforts. Because this would not happen without my sweet levy over here. It just wouldn't. Okay. It's time to just move a little bit of our mess out of the way here. I'm going to take my... If you just joined us and you didn't see this, I'm using one of those Swiffer dusters to clean up. And I'm telling you, these things are some of the best. I mean, obviously, get your vacuum out and your vacuum will pick up a lot. I don't have a vacuum in the shop. I should, but I don't. Um, but... <clears throat> without having a vacuum, this is a really good way to pick up just a lot of glitter. And you, you know, you can keep moving it around and it will come up with new, slightly tacky surfaces to work off of. So I'm not gonna bore you by cleaning up every little piece of glitter, it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna tap this off one more time and I'm getting virtually no drop off this time. So I know that I'm done. And how beautiful is that? Is that like the prettiest thing you've seen in a while? That's beautiful. Well, Katie, you're gonna need to get that roll out of the cupboard and let's um, let's make some glitter paper. We all have a stash of glitter, don't we? I, I'm pretty sure as crafters, we almost all have glitter. Let's get it up, use it up. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? I love it. Okay, you guys ready to make some cards? Woohoo! Yay, I do so love this project. I, I, I do. <laughs> I think you're right, Don. You're gonna be finding glitter for a long time. <laughs> but your carpets are gonna be beautiful and sparkly. <laughs> if that's any consolation at all. <laughs> okay. Let's pull out our biggest piece of cardstock. We have a slightly glittery five by seven. Shake my glitter off of that. And I'm going to, one of the things I like to do when I do this is I want to be able to see where I'm going when I go to put this on my card stock, you know, when I go to face my card. I'm gonna trim this edge piece clear off so that I can line up to that bottom line a little bit. And I think I will be okay. Now, my, my tape lines aren't necessarily straight on there, so I was just looking to see whether I needed to trim it into a straight line or not, but I think it's gonna work out just fine, just Just um, laying it here. Yeah, I probably overdo it, really. <laughs> I probably oversell the messiness, but then nobody yells at me and tells me I didn't tell them it was going to be messy. If I tell you it's going to be super messy and then it's not so bad, then I'm a hero. <laughs> if I don't tell you it's going to be messy and it's messy, then I go from zero. <laughs> I go to zero. I'm no longer a hero. Now I'm a zero. <laughs> Katie has a new glittery kitty. You have a glittery kitty. Great. Did I ever 
tell you guys, I probably have told this story because I love it. So forgive me if I'm having a senior moment and telling you the same story over and over. But did I ever tell you about when the kids were little and we were making cards at the kitchen table? And Amy, my schnauzer that many of you will remember, my lovey Amy, I just loved her so much, was a puppy back then. So that was a long time ago. But we were sitting at the kitchen table and Bryce and the two girls and I were making Christmas cards. And we could tell the girls were getting a little fidgety, so we decided it was time for a break from our project. And we left the room and went downstairs and watched a Disney flick or something. And while we were down there, Amy came trotting down the stairs, and her entire muzzle was ringed with glitter. She'd, had, she'd gotten up on the table and stuck her, her nose in the, in the glitter bowl <laughs> we had on the table. So she came down with a very charming frosting to her silver whiskers. <laughs> okay, so you know me, I put down my three, I decided I'd probably better tell you what I'm doing. <laughs> I put down my three rows of tape, uh, finger lift tape on my card front. I've attached it to the back of my card. And now I'm just going to cut out around my card because I don't believe in measuring and getting fussy if I don't have to. I'm just going to cut this right along here. Oh, I just realized I did something stupid. Well, it's not the first time I've done something stupid. It won't be the last. I didn't have you attach your bow to the cardstock before. I sh probably should have measured a five by seven because I should have attached my bow to the back. Now there's two solutions, a couple solutions for that at this point. You can, you could trim your tails and just put, here's our bow. <laughs> this, the fluffy bow is for this project. You could trim the tails and just put the bow on the top since I was goofy and didn't do that. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put this around the face of my card. I'm still going to anchor it to the inside of my card, and then I'm going to put a piece of 5x7 cardstock over it inside so I hide my work. Take your bow and pull the little, you know, that's all wrapped up, it's organza, and it's just one big one you know one stack of ribbon right now because I didn't stop and fluff these I tied them for you I tied the bows for all these kits but I did not stop and fluff the bows for you you guys got to do that part so just pull these out and make the bow fluffy and then if I'm going to anchor the bow on the back it doesn't really have to have the best glue ever it just needs a piece of finger lift tape. So let me get my trusty finger lift out here again. You know, um, yes, Thelma, I almost always use long blade scissors when I'm cutting around my card because the more wax you have to take at it when you're cutting around your card, the more likely it is that you're gonna get off and go in a different direction. With the long blade scissors, you really only have to open and close those scissors just a couple times to get the side of the, side of the card. I love my long blade scissors for... Oh, Katie, you're good. Actually, if you haven't put your, um, if you haven't stuck your doily or your, um, your glitter card to your card yet, you can go ahead and measure five by seven because I forgot to do that. Measure five, measure and cut a five by seven. And then instead of doing what I'm gonna have to do and I'm gonna anchor mine inside my card and then add another piece of paper to the inside to cover up my mess. You, since you have not done it yet, just go ahead and put your, do exactly what I'm doing, but do it only on the glitter part and then anchor your glitter paper down. 
instead of doing what I'm having to do and add an extra step and fix it. Does that make sense? So sometimes it's a, it's a great thing to get behind. <laughs> I'm going to put my tape on here and then I'm going to fluff this again before I actually put it down. But I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to run it right along on top of my organza ribbon. Yes, you will be able to see my tape just a little bit. It's transparent tape. You're not going to be able to see it very much. And this is one of my favorite ways to anchor a card or anchor a bow if it is wrapping clear around your card. So I'm going to, all I'm doing is stretching my tape out down my ribbon. I don't really need my ribbon to be this long. I'm going to cut this off a little bit because it doesn't have to be a great big old long thing. I put my tape across the back. I'm going to fluff this out a little bit again. And let me tell you what I do if it's if it's doing what it's doing and mine keeps collapsing on itself and kind of annoying me. I'm going to take a little piece of my tape just a little one, you know, that much. And uh, I'm going to spread these out. And I'm going to put a little piece of tape across the back where nobody's ever going to see it to make those stay fluffed out and pretty. <laughs> cheat. I do cheat. <laughs> Craft cheats are great. Yeah, I always try to make sure my instructions are clear as mud. <laughs> Um, Eric Robinson, um, the bow kits, I just finished cutting. Each bow kit has 30 pieces of ribbon in it, believe it or not. That round about 30. It's either 29 or 30. It's a lot. It's a lot. And Brittany says, you can't make me do that again because she does not enjoy doing the ribbon kits. There's too many working pieces in one kit. Too much labor intensive. So I just finished making up the ribbon. I just have to put the little bow pin kits together and then we should be able to get those kits done and ready to go. I'm going to say we're probably, in fact I could even put the link out there now to order those kits. I'm going to say we're maybe two weeks from being able to do a new glitter, um, a new um, bow class. I think we'll do it on a day other than Saturday because I want to keep offering something new in this time slot. So you might have two classes that week if that's okay. But we will get those out there and available really soon. It won't, it won't be today. Um, I like to, by the time I put the listing up, I like to um, have the class kits available very shortly afterwards because... Otherwise, we're holding up orders downstairs, and the girls don't like me very much when I do that. They have boxes sitting everywhere waiting for something. They like to get them right out the door. And don't they do a good job of getting those orders out the door? i got to say, those kids are amazing. Okay. I'm going to take my newly taped bow. I'm going to put it on about an inch from the top. I'm just going to wrap that tape right around to the inside of my card. I'm not going to worry too much if all of my bow petals aren't exactly where I want them yet because I'm going to come back in. I'm going to come back in and I can refluff these just a little bit. Then I could take my tape off the back if I want to. But you can leave it on and it doesn't hurt anything. I'm going to take the piece of tape off the back. And I get everything right where I want it. And I'm going to let those little layers lay down nicely on my card. Now the extra, the sticky tape, the finger lift tape, <coughs> is not going to have a great hold over the glitter surface. 
but it's going to be good enough, guys, because we're anchoring it to the back. Yes, thank you, Alice. Our girls do an amazing job of getting those orders out the door, don't they? They try really hard, and they um, they take customer service really seriously. We talk about wanting to, you know, the thing that sets us apart, the thing I want to set us apart is just superior service going above and beyond and getting orders out the door. We're not the cheapest store because we don't get to buy in the bulk that they get to buy in in the great big stores, but we try to make sure that we give you a good reason to buy from us because we go above and beyond anything you're gonna get anywhere else. So we get our orders right out. We do things like today, you know, we try to do stuff that makes us worth shopping with, so. Uh, that's okay, Maria. You you still get to to um, sit in on the fun, and I'm glad you decided to sign in today just to just to um, hang in, the, hang out with us, and have a good social time. So thank you for being there. Okay, we only have two steps left to go, and this card is going to be done, my friends. We want to find our little tag. Some of you will have a swan, some of you will have this red bird. Either way we go, we're good. Okay, and we are going to, I recommend glue for this one rather than tape because the glue is gonna get down there and all those little pore surfaces between the glue flakes and hold this better. So I recommend glue rather than tape. I just refilled my glue bottle before we started and it doesn't want to come out of there. <clears throat> so I'm gonna get my crafters, another one of my crafters best friends here. I have this little wheel of pins that I keep handy to keep the nozzle of my glue bottle friendly. You know, I love these little glue bottles, but because that little nozzle is so very tiny, you often have to run a, <clears throat> A pin down it. Don't use your good sewing pins for this, guys. I mean, good sewing pins can be expensive. I have, if you want them, these cheap little wheels of pins from China. And I think they're priced at round about 99 cents in our store. Um, <laughs> it's funny, the first time I bought them, they said they were stainless steel. And I thought, oh, that'll be great for my glue bottles because they won't tarnish. No, don't leave them in your glue bottles. <laughs> you leave them in your glue bottles, they're going to tarnish, they're going to put rust in your glue, but they're great for cleaning. Oh, there we go, got it, got it running again. Um, they're great for cleaning the, um, the little, the tiny little, you know, almost wire size opening in these tiny glue bottles. And I do so love these tiny glue bottles. And if you're wondering where to get those, we have them. We got you covered. So, put a little glue on there, and I'm gonna slide this right up under there as if that tag were tied into my bow. We didn't have to actually tie it into our bow. I don't like the way this side of my bow is laying. And I think it's objecting because I have the, the you know, bow loops kind of in a wonky direction, so I'm going to reorder those and see if that will lay down better. There we go. I like that better. Oh, I like that so much better. Sometimes you just have to fiddle with it a bit. There, that's much better. Now we've got our, our bird on, or your swan. Now, some of you have a little tiny rose. Would you get me one of those little roses, honey, out of the bag at the end of the table there? I just want to show that. I have this red one that's going to go on this one because I liked the way the red looked. But I didn't have a bigger flower for the swans that was in a color that looked good. So I gave you little ribbon roses because it just, this looks fine just like it is, but I gave you a little ribbon, um, a little ribbon rose. For those of you who have that, we'll talk about a little bit about the positioning of that. Let's get your little ribbon rose out. If you have the little ribbon rose, you can either put it right on top, which does look good, 
or you can tuck it in sort of towards the front. I think maybe right on top looks good. It, it actually looks better, I think, than my first sample does. But just put some glue on there, hold it for a second, and get it, you know, get it positioned where you want it. Or put it on sideways and let those little, the little leaves coming out from it help hold it. If you've got this one, if you've got best glue ever, that's the very best way to anchor this. If you don't have best glue ever, and remember when you're using best glue ever for something like this, put it on, let it dry completely before you put it on your card. But if you don't have best glue ever, in, and I couldn't send you a, roll, a vial of that, sorry, <laughs> not the price of the kit, I... You can put just plain glitter or plain glue on there, but you're gonna to need to hold it in place for a few minutes and let that kind of, not a few minutes, but a little while, and have that bond that. <laughs> Joy said, I stopped watching, went to order two more kits. Well, the good news of ordering two more kits, Joy, is that we have these, I, I can't say enough about these mats. These mats are really nice. I couldn't believe that I was able to pick some of these up at a price that allowed me to just put them in here. But um, yeah, so you'll get in a couple extra craft mats too. And whether you're crafting with friends or have one tied up with one project and move to another space and do another project, it's good to have more than one. <coughs> okay, so there we go. What do you think? You like? Okay, then we had some, you know, we broke up a kit to get these little tags. So we had we had pieces left and we thought, well, I usually like to have two or three cards in a class, so let's just make up a couple more cards. So we did. This was our main project, but let's make a couple more cards while we're at it here, huh? We've got, you should have one topper that looks sort of like this. And you should have a full piece of cardstock. Mine happens to be the swan because we made the kits so that you either got the swan or on one and the bluebird on the other just so you'd have a little variety. And you can use a piece of our leftover glitter paper if you like to make the background for one of your cards. Now I'm seeing that my paper's not going to be real wide here. So what do I want to do? I, sh I tell you what I'm going to do. I don't have quite enough, quite enough of the glittered surface left to completely cover my card, but I do have some solid glue. So I'm going to piece this together a little bit, I think. Okay. Hi, Annette. Hi, Annette. Okay, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go ahead and place my card here. You can do this however it works best on yours, guys, depending on what you, you know, where you cut your first stopper from. I'm going to cut mine right here at the top. So I'm going to, uh, this time I'm doing it on purpose, I'm actually going to lay down my tape. <laughs> I'm not wrapping around another bow, so I'm safe to do that. I'm going to lay down my tape. And I'm going to use a piece of my card that still has the lace on it. And we chose this particular topper set for you for this project. Because if you look at the toppers in the background, they have lace behind the behind the swan and behind the bluebird. They actually have lace in the background, so I thought that was kind of a nice little tie to what we were working on today. I was saying a little bit ago, if you weren't here to hear it, that there's still a few kits left out in the store. Not a whole lot, but there are a few left. So if you want to grab those, you can still get the extra craft mat, and it's a pretty good deal for what you're getting in this kit with the three vials of glitter and the 
toppers and a craft mat. I always work hard, guys, to try and make sure these kits end up being a good value for you. And speaking of kits and good values, um, we're temporarily, <clears throat> excuse me, there was a little <clears throat> voice break moment there, sounded like a teenager. Um, we are temporarily sold out of the um, marine kits for next week. However, because it was amazing, the sales were amazing. But um, I have more supplies on order. <clears throat> I don't have enough of everything to make an indefinite number of kits. But I do have, um, I do have enough to make another dozen or so. If I get just some more toppers and some more background papers, those are on order from UK and they're due back, they're due here, <clears throat> they're due here on Tuesday. So we'll put them together Tuesday and ship them Tuesday or Wednesday. You may or may not have it in time for the actual class, but you can still get in on that marine class if you didn't get it yet. So watch for those to come back up on the site. So I just took one of my side pieces there <clears throat> and added a solid strip to my card. That makes some sense? Just to kind of top it off and nobody would ever know that I messed up there. <laughs> I didn't really mess up, it's just my paper wasn't quite wide enough to. I think my sample paper that I used when I did this had two, sheet, two strips of six and I think I put a six and a four on yours. So. Now I can really do this any direction I want to. In the sample, I did it like this, in the sample that you saw before. But now I'm just gonna look at it and say, how do I think it's gonna look since this one's gonna be a little bit different. Let me pull the other sample out so we can see that. Okay, here's the sample I had from before. At that time, you see, I actually used one of the rounded pieces of the, the glitter cardstock. You use what you have available. This time, I used the straight edge. And this time, I almost think, I don't know, let's look at it and see which way we like it best. We got this one. We got it that way. And that still would look good here. And put the little bow, pretty tight bow, out here. Now these bows, you're going to have to trim those up. I just whacked up a bunch of velvet ribbon, and I did go ahead and put best glue ever on them because regular um, glue wasn't holding these. It had to have the best glue ever. And again, I couldn't send you a whole bottle of that, so I went ahead and just wrapped those, you know, wrapped those and glued those for you before I sent it. That still would look cute here. If I wanted to, I could do it this way. And I actually think that looks cute too. And then you got a little tag to match. So we really can't go any way we want. I think I'm going to go ahead and go with my original design because I do think that looks the best, maybe. Just position it how you like it, though. What makes you feel good? If that's what you should do because there's no could have a shorter front on the card and would maybe have not have to piece it good point you know Mary what would be really fun I didn't think of this but that that's a great idea what if we had just put this piece clear up to the top cut this top line and then put blue inside the card that would be fun you're so smart ha so smart. Okay. All right. I do like the solid blue edge at the top too, though, so I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, foam squares. You can put this up on foam squares if you want to. I don't think I included foam squares, but you could put it on foam squares if you wanted to, or you can glue this topper straight down. You do get some dimension inherently from the, from the bow that you're putting on it, so it's really up to you. If you use foam squares, put a little glue on the bottom of the foam squares because you want those to really stick into that into that glue and hold. I do think it might look good with some foam squares. I think I'll stick a couple on there. 
I have some sitting here from another project. Let me just put a few foam squares on the back there. I like dimension. I bet you guys figured that out though. About three or four or five or six hundred cards ago. But I like foam squares. I like dimension on stuff. It pleases me to have things at different levels on the card. So I'm going to put a few foam squares on there. Then I'm just going to put one little dot of glue on each one of those foam squares on the side that I'm actually sticking it to the card because I want the glue to get down in the little crevices of the glitter and hold on. You will get it. Somebody asked me earlier about shedding. You will get a tiny amount of shedding from these cards where the glitter falls off but really not a whole lot because the we burnish it so many times, you know, we rub the glitter in and we tap it off and we rub the glitter in and we tap it off. Um, I, I like to give credit where credit's due. I saw this technique actually using flat two inch ribbon and we have flat two inch ribbon in the store or um, lace in the store. Or if you're a sewer, you may have some flat two inch ribbon that makes beautiful toppers using this technique. Um, I learned this technique at a workshop with um, Hot Off the Press and at that workshop Paulette credited um, Els from Elizabeth Craft Design with having shown her this technique. So we crafters, we get around a good idea. It lives a long time. Because I learned this technique probably, I'll bet it was close to 10 years ago. And I just thought of it, well, you know, quite a while back actually when I made the birth flowers kits up and we did the painting with glitter on those. I hadn't done it for a long time and something made me think about it and I resurrected that idea then. But great ideas live a long time. Okay, I trimmed my tails on my velvet bow. I liked it about like that, you know, maybe one inch tails. But you clip them wherever you like them. I put glue in the center, put a pretty generous amount of glue there. The back of the ribbon will hold better with regular glue than the velvet to velvet. That's what was not. Gluing on the velvet side, mm -mm, I didn't want to do it. Okay. I'm going to put my bluebird on over the top. You have the little bluebird. And we are going to, I'm going to put some foam squares because this is sitting up on top of a double piece of ribbon. I'm going to put some foam squares here too, just so that this isn't just falling off and bowing around all that ribbon, it will kind of have a place. In fact, I think just put the foam squares on the very opposite corners I expected to. I'm going to put them on four corners, but then I think I'm going to raise them one more level on the top left and the lower right just because I can see that my bow is higher there. So I'm doing stack two foam squares there so I can clear all that. The other two foam squares are doing absolutely nothing really. They're just kind of sticking on top of the bow material. They may stick a little, they probably won't. So I'm gonna stack two squares high on the ones I really want to hold this up which is for me going to be the upper left. Can you guys see what I mean by that? That bow is kind of bulky. I can only do a tap to it since foam squares weren't in the kit. Yeah, well, most most of these guys are gonna have foam squares. Probably. Yeah, most of these guys are gonna have foam squares. If you've been doing any of our classes, we put them in almost everything. So I bet most of these people will have foam squares. If you didn't have any foam squares, Put lots and lots of glue on it and try and stick it to the bow. <laughs> I should have put foam squares in, but you know, sometimes you just miss something. And this is something that I could have. Red liner tape work. 
Um, I don't think Redliner's going to hold any better. You know, those of you who were here for last week's class when we did the masculine fold-out cards, we found that Redliner tape really was not effective on those particles. We got the same thing going on velvet and glitter, so I don't think Redliner tape's going to do much either. Glue is your best bet. Okay, we are finished. Except, come on guys, we have this beautiful thing going on here and we have leftover glitter. I recommend that we go through and we put just a little bit of glitter on this bird. Whether you have the swan or whether you have the bluebird, I'm not going to get all carried away because I certainly have glitter already going on this card. But I'm just going to kind of outline the bigger feathers on the bird. I'm not taking a whole lot of time to do this because it's not really, my lines aren't going to show that much. But I'm just outlining the bird and the larger wings on the bird. And I'm going to take some of my leftover glitter, even though it's mixed, I don't care. I'm going to put a tiny amount of glitter on my bird. And it's just going to be the final touch to make that absolutely gorgeous. I'll brush that off, brush off my excess glitter with my glitter brush when it dries. But what do you think? Two cards done. How are you doing for time, Brace? I have no idea. You have no idea? You can't see a clock? Two computers and you have no clock. Four o'clock. Okay. Oh, we're only an hour in. We're great. We have time to finish one more card. Okay. Now, last card you should have in your kit. You should have a five by five or six by six. I guess it's five by five. You should have a piece of five by five or six by six. I'm not sure. Yeah, six by six mirror board. Let's cover our card with our mirror board to begin with. This card can go either this way or this way, whatever suits you. I think I'll have mine open on the left, but you can have it open from the top if you want to. Whatever suits your fancy. Thank you, Annette. That's a nice compliment. Okay, so we're going to peel our tape. One, two, three, and peel our tape. I'm going to line up my mirror board using the most important edge to get to is my fold. I can trim everything else off, but you want it to be covering your fold right up to the edge of your fold. I'm going to put my mirror board on. I'm going to take my big blade scissors and I'm going to go behind here. I'm going to trim that up to the size of my card. I'm very excited about the projects I've been working on for you. Barbecue grills are done and shipping now. So if you haven't gotten them yet, you will be getting them soon if you order the barbecue grill. And um, my family was very generous and they gave me, they went together and they bought me a new cricket machine. for Mother's Day. And I had two machines running here the other day. Margie came over and helped me. And we had two machines whipping out those barbecue grills. I gotta say, it takes a while to cut those dudes. There's 46 pieces per barbecue grill. Don't let that intimidate you. It will be a fun and rewarding project to do. 
So don't let it intimidate you the size of it. It will be fine. We will work on it together. <laughs> Although on the barbecue grill, one thing I will say is I almost always say, oh, do whatever you want because you're going to do it anyway. On the barbecue grill, you really are going to want to hang in there with us and um, go step by step. Well, isn't that interesting? I just cut it to five by five and it's not even. Hmm. Well, I tried to cut this to four and three quarters. Oh, that's what I did. That's what I did. Four and three quarters. These cards must be five and a quarter. I bet they are because it's bigger than I expected it to be. Some of our cards are five and some are five and a quarter. But I just cut this to four and three quarters by four and three quarters. You could even cut it to five by five and you'd be fine. But that's still pretty. It just has a little wider border than the first one that I did. But it's still very pretty. Okay, I'm going to put my tape flags on so I can hopefully center this. Remember, tape flags, you don't use three pieces of tape, you use just two. Two pieces of tape on the outer edges. I expose just a small amount of my adhesive. Come on. It, uh, it's invariable. I do this all the time because I like this technique. And when I'm not doing it on camera, the tape releases really nicely. <laughs> when I do it on camera, I have to kind of fight with my tape to release just a little bit of tape right on the end. <coughs> and shake it a little bit to release the tape from the, from the paper. So I get my little flags hanging out there, just about an inch exposed. I'm going to line this up till I like my, the way it's centered. That looks pretty good. I'm going to hold it firmly with one hand, pull the tape flag with the other, hold it firmly, pull the tape flag with the other hand, and there we go. We have a nicely centered piece. Isn't it discouraging when you get a beautiful topper all ready to go and then you find that you have centered it wrong on your card. That's discouraging. So how do you fix that? Well, there's a couple ways you can fix it. You know, after the fact, you could cut that topper out and try it all again. You'll just have an extra piece of paper under it. But using tape flags to begin with will save you a lot of grief. Okay, <clears throat> I want to show you a couple things that Margie did here. She made this card. And when she made this card, she actually dropped, see how she um, cut some off the bottom here? And she let the cattails show a little bit more. That's one thing you could do. She also took <clears throat> a piece of this leftover cutoff border. She cut this out like that and made a little lily, um, a lily pad or a lily pad flower. And she 3D foam taped it up here. I thought that was really pretty. She also took a piece of this leftover water, either this one or just take a piece off of here. She trimmed it along in kind of an uneven shape and she 3D foam taped some water to the front of this, which I thought was pretty. Let's look at her sample again. I hope you can see that. Can you see that in your, where she's got two layers of water and then the lily pad. I just thought that was really extra pretty, so I thought I'd show you what she did there. I'm not gonna take the time to do that today, but it's fun ideas. Everybody has great ideas. Okay, so we have this down. We have a Just For You sticker in your kit. I'm gonna put, you could certainly trade this out, put anything you wanted. But I was starting to say about the barbecue kits, I usually say, do it whatever you want, because we're all, we all have different likes and we want to do things differently. When we do the barbecue grills next week, oh, you're going to want to follow step by step. <laughs> you're going to work with me to do it. And I really, really want you to work along 
because that way I can help answer any questions that you have. Some of the um, stuff we're going to do is, it, it's not hard. It's just knowing what pieces to glue together where. And it's, it's important we, we all do them the same way. I've got this part on. I'm going to take my fancy schmancy little dazzles. I really like these two together. If you have the bird, um, you could still add a few dazzles to it if you wanted to. But I'm going to put a row of three right here just because it kind of fills that space and I like the way it complements what we're going to do to the swan. I put a little row of three there up in the upper corner and then take some of these smaller ones and cover these blue dots on the swan because it's pretty <laughs> and we can <laughs> and I should have brought my tweezers for this job see it here over there but rather than sliding away again I'll try and do it this way and oh Frank handed me some my hero he's just the best you know well he's got me a little bit off there we go what is, why is that being so stubborn? It's getting away. There we go. Get it tacked down better. Remember when we do these? I like to roll these off on my finger. Especially these little ones. Because they're a pain. But then I can pick them off easier. Whatever works for you. This is just the technique I found to work for me. To get, them, get things on reasonably soon. I just lost it. It's probably in my hair. <laughs> I can't tell you the number of times I leave the shop after working, whether it's making dot and do's, those little ones for there, or these dazzles, jewel dazzles, that I leave the shop and go in the house and look in the mirror and laugh because I've got them in my hair, on my glasses, all kinds of places they don't belong front of my shirt and once again with the swan if you wanted to glitter a little bit you could certainly glitter a little bit on the swan and again I won't do all of these but I just wanted to show you a little bit about how it looks this was really a fun kit and this is kind of like the very last remnants of the um, Paradise Jewels we have at Hope. Hunky Dory will put out a, another one sometime that's similar to Paradise Jewels. Paradise Jewels were great fun for going through and adding extra glitz to the cards because they just were kind of almost pre-set up to do that. They, you know, because we have all these little places that almost say, put a rhinestone here. <laughs> Put a jewel dazzle there. You give me the, the signal like that, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna do it. Oh come on. And with these particular pair of tweezers is a little bit bent, which happens when we abuse them like they get abused by me and others here in the classroom sometimes. Fortunately, they don't cost a fortune, and I know where I can get a new one. But what do you guys think of painting with glitter? Thank you, Sandra. The girls are really, really, really good. Golden air board is a frame for the topper. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> mirror board. You know, you guys know I use a lot of Mary. It's not cheap but it's not horribly expensive either and it just adds so much to your cards if you haven't tried 
using mirror board behind your card making, give it a try because it really is, it just adds a real elegance to your cards. And I think you'll be happy you did try it, especially for those, you know, extra special wedding cards, and anniversary cards. And I don't know. I'm not sure I ever made a card I don't think is special. If I'm going to take the time to make it, I want it to be, I want it to, I want to be proud to give it. I said I wasn't going to do all these. I've done about half of them because I just can't help myself. I just get started and I keep going. Oops. These are pesky little jewels, though. They they do pop around on you. I don't have any more in my fingers at the moment. <laughs> I only have just a couple left, so I guess at this point I'll just finish it. And we're almost done. I do want to show you, uh, remind you, for those of you who have not seen them yet, about our beach class coming up next week. I'm very excited about those. And from the reception and the number of kits we've sold, <clears throat> I thought maybe I was being overly optimistic when we made the kits, that maybe I was kind of overbuilding a little. But, you know, I, I liked them, and I thought you would like them. And... I'm just delighted how you guys have taken to that kit that I make extras and they sell out this quickly. Um, again, I won't have an awful lot more of them because I only have supplies to make another dozen or so, but we will have another dozen of those kits going up this week. I, was, I thought about doing a pre-sale on them and the girls told me they really, really, really don't like it when I do that because they have orders sitting everywhere. And when we do a pre-sale for something we don't already have, then the order has to stay there or we have to ship the extra pieces separately. That gets expensive, so. Okay, I could probably use one more there, but I still might just put a little bit of glitter around these bigger feathers maybe a little bit in the water. Just follow, not all of it, in fact, let me do the water. I'm not gonna do all of the water. I'm gonna just choose a few lines to kind of follow around, I think. It sounds funny to say after what we just did with glitter, but I think with glitter, little touches of glitter tend to be better than massive amounts, except when you're painting with glitter. You have to make an all-out exception for painting with glitter because you want glitter everywhere then. <laughs> um, we have, I have a series. We're going to try something a little bit different. I was putting together a kit that I really liked, but the price was too high for a single class. And as I said, I've been trying to Kind of contain the cost of these classes that you guys are signing on with me week after week. I don't want to bankrupt anybody with this process. I just want to keep having fun and keeping entertained and showing new and different um, ideas for you. So we are, um, uh, so I had a class that I was putting together the class kit was going to run like 60 bucks because it had three die sets and it had just all kinds of stuff. And so what I decided to do with that is I'm going to still offer the whole class, but I'm going to split it up over three weeks so you can buy part A, B, and C, or you can buy the whole thing together and it will cost a little bit less because we'll have less shipping, of course. But I'm going to put it together in a, in a series of three weeks. You're going to like them. I am sure you're going to like them because I love them. And you guys tend to have similar tastes to me or you wouldn't be watching me. <laughs> Why don't you grab a couple of those samples over there, honey, would you please? And let's show them. If you get the round ones, we'll actually be seeing some of the first week. I'm still working on the samples. As you know, I have a little bit of time before the next class starts, or before I have to have these done, so I'm just kind of working at my leisure. But, um, yeah, those are good. 
but uh, let me show you a little bit about a little bit about what we're doing here. I think you're gonna like these. These are landscape cards, and you get in the first week you'll get this round die, and then it has a series of smaller dies inside it. So here's one. It's beautiful landscapes. Here's one for winter. And cattails out in the pond. And you're holding it off the camera. And I'm using um, really fun holographic gold for the winter. And here's a, this actually is one of the other weeks. This one's an oval. But see, some of them are going to be round hoppers, and some of them are going to be oval. And I even have a square that can either be used as a square or a diamond. And we're going to spread those out over three weeks so that we maintain, you know, that $20 target. I've been able to stay under the $20 mark in everything except the beach kit. And you're just getting so much with the beach kit that it had to be a little bit more. But... That's what I'm working on for after the barbecues. So more news to come on that one. I'm still building the samples. Let's take a look at next week. Let me just slide my whole mat out of the way a little bit here. Let's get our beach cards for next week out. We may have to bring up the vacuum for this little job here. But Let's take a look at these. I am so very pleased with the way these turned out. And it was great fun to work with so many different materials in these. Um, these are in no certain order. And I've tried in my designs to leave you room to put, you know, happy Father's Day, happy birthday, you know, um, whatever you want. I've tried to leave you some room on each of these to put a sentiment. So if you see an open area, I didn't want to decide for you when we're making 12 cards at one time what your occasions would be. I just left space to put that in. But you can see in most cases where it would go really nicely. So you get in this kit, you get the baker's twine, you get a whole box, an entire box of these wooden shapes. I used my glitter pens. You can color those with alcohol markers, with watercolor. These just come in the little uncolored, you know, little wood shapes. Um, it's bare wood, but I, I tell you, those new rope glitter markers were really fun for coloring these. But your choice. You may have sparkle markers from um, Spectrum Noir would work well, watercolor markers, anything. You can color them with virtually anything. Sharpies, you could color them with Sharpies. So you can use anything you want. Um, in the kit, I've given you the layering papers. These background papers that I, that I was able to source for these are just beautiful. Of course, they're made by the people that made the toppers, so it's not surprising they would be beautiful together. But you got the 3D sheets. you got the wooden pieces. We've got all these wonderful baker's twine. You get this die in the kit, the fishing net. The turtle, oh, I love these animals. You guys know me, I love all things animal. I did not make these glitzy and glamoury. I didn't put a lot of extra embellishment on them because these, the idea behind these was these will be cards for guys. Now, certainly they could be used for women, anybody who loves the ocean and who doesn't love the ocean, but we're going to do this torn paper technique. It's <laughs> just fun. That's just fun. Look at these seagulls. And doesn't it just look like an ocean scene? I feel like I'm there with this one. The little um, starfish there. So pretty. So this is next week, guys. Very, very pretty. I used a lot of wood shapes on this one. Then I, this was the first card I made, and then I thought, oh, 
I don't know how many pieces I have here, but I better slow down a little on those. I might not have enough. I finished with half a box left. Use your wood shapes liberally. <laughs> little pathway down to the ocean with the seagulls. Oh my gosh. Another torn paper technique here. The torn paper technique around this blue was really perfect for this because it kind of simulated that foamy edge of the wave kind of feel from the beach. I love that. So I made 11 cards with the base kit and I saved one topper for the add-on kit so I could so I would have an image for the add-on. The add-on is simply another background die that matches this kit. If you like it, pick up the add-on kit. It's a really good value because I gave you the add-on kit or the die and all the pieces to make the extra card I made for $13 and the die alone sells for $14.95. So, Seagull. This is a big kit, but beautiful. I, I really do like it. It's one of, I, I just had a really fun time making these. Really fun. And I love the way the baker's twine kind of simulated the ropes out on the dock. Because you always see ropes around where you have boats. And Okay, and here's the add-on. And I cut this add-on die in Blue Mary so you could see it. Had I taken the time to emboss this, this would be even more impressive because well, you can, it's a cut and emboss die. So you can cut it and then run it back through your machine with your embossing mat and make these, you know, the little ridges and things even more pronounced. But it's really pretty. And then I used my extra topper inside just with a torn piece of paper. And then we cut a little moon for you too, because this kind of looked like clouds to us. We thought we'd put a little moon back here. That was Bryce's idea, by the way, the moon. And I think it really added a lot. So he's pretty. He's a pretty clever guy. He just doesn't want to be on camera telling you he's a clever guy. <laughs> okay, so there's our, there's our maritime slash masculine slash beach set for next week. And finally, the barbecues are now done. Oops, this one's missing a stone. So ignore the fact that this is missing one piece. And uh, this is our barbecue grill for the following week. It is going to be great fun. Don't be afraid of the fact there's 45 pieces. Just work along and we will be fine. But oh, what fun. So you're thinking I should add gloves, bleach, masks, and rope, Katie? <laughs> oh, you're funny. Okay, so there we go. You guys, um, that's it for today. You guys have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. If you go out, be safe. Even better, stay in, be safe. Oh, yep, yeah, and... For those of you out there, if you haven't already done so, give me the thumbs up, please. Thank you, Alice. <laughs> give me the thumbs up. Let me know that you like what we're doing and that it has value for you. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, hit the little subscribe button. It will remind you about new things out here. And if you're not signed up for the newsletter, I'll put a link down below in the comments section. Sign up for the newsletter. I'll send you a link to a copy of this of this. Um, this presentation for today and a list of anything that we worked with that was outside of the the class kit. Thank you very much. I love you guys. Thanks for being out there. You guys stay stay in if you can. If you can't stay safe, please take care of yourself. We'll see you soon. Goodbye, Gracie. <laughs>